Hello, I'm David with Big Lake Software. I'm going to show you how to set up Eclipse to use a JTAG to debug a remote target using OpenOCD. First, we need to configure our debug configuration to talk to the JTAG debugger via OpenOCD. Earlier, we had set up the GNU MCU Eclipse plugin. So the first thing we want to do is just go ahead and give this a name, something that goes along with our project. Next, we want to go ahead and just uh, set up our directory for our project. Just click here. This is our directory. We'll select the executable. This one here happens to be the large executable with symbols. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Now we need to set up all the open OCD paths and GDB paths. First thing we'll do is set up open OCD and point Eclipse to exactly where the executable is located at. This was set up in an earlier blog entry. If you need to set it up, just go ahead and click the link below and it'll tell you how to get set up open OCD using an open JTAG. So there we go. Have that guy set up. Now we need to go ahead and also uh, put our command line in for executing OpenOCD. Again, this is uh, from the earlier setup. We're just pointing to the configuration files for the JTAG and the configuration file for the board itself. So this runs uh, pretty much exactly like it did from the command line. One thing we need to remember is that Eclipse likes absolute paths, so even though I cheated and captured the paths from the command line example, we're just going to go ahead and put the absolute paths into these config files. Now we need to go ahead and point to our across GDB. Again, we had installed the tool chain from my friends over at Lenaro. We'll just go ahead and point to the absolute path to the GDB. Hit apply. Now we just need to go ahead and uh, make some final modifications. We will not be using ARM Semi Hosting. Uh, for the executable, since we've pointed the project actually to the uh, executable that has the symbol files, I'm just going to go ahead and point to the smaller ELF file. I've had trouble when I tried to just go ahead and launch the larger file. Um, I sus suspect that maybe uh, it's so large that it overwrites the uh, device tree, but it's a different discussion. So anyways, we're going to debug it in RAM. Very important. Set our initial breakpoint at underbar main, since that's the actual name. It's not main as you would find in a regular executable uh, in a user space. And of course, I also selected not to continue when it starts. And this is because um, I want it to stop right when it's done loading the executable into RAM. So let's go ahead and load it. And there it goes. You can see here it's started up. And it is stopped before it started executing. In the bottom uh, window there, you can see some of the registers that are dumped by default. This is just a console output from the Open OCD tools. Unfortunately, it chooses red as its output color, so those are not errors. So here we are at the start of the U-boot executable. We have our breakpoint uh, on underbar main. We'll go ahead and continue, and it will run to that. Here we are, we'll scroll up, and there's the entry point, entry main. So the first command that runs is right there, line 75. All right, let's go ahead and resume. Now, U-boot uh, will start up. We need to go over here and press the button to stop the auto-boot. You could always turn off auto-boot in the uh, options beforehand. You can see here we are now loading a different version of U-Boot from what was on the board uh, when it was built today. All right, go ahead and pause it. Ah. And so we see we've stopped the compiler, or sorry, the uh, executable from running, and it's at an odd address. So why is that? Well, the reason is, is because one of the steps that U-Boot takes is to relocate itself in memory. Um, so we need to go in and tell Eclipse that, um, we are now in a different location than what was actually loaded by the default symbol files. So first, we remove the old symbol file. We re-add the exact same file 
this time we will point to our offset. So it's basically the exact same file, just copy, copying what was uh, up there on the couple previous lines, and then in that with the offset that we want to load it at. I know you're asking where did I get this offset, but let's uh, I'll I'll show you that in a few moments. But first, I just want to show you that this yes does indeed um, reload the simple file pro properly. So let's go ahead and take a quick step here, and that'll cause the debugger to to stop and then reload the uh, proper file. There we go. You can see where we're at. At this point, you could step out of things, step into things. You could add breakpoints, everything else uh, that you would expect to be able to do directly from Eclipse. And so here we are, some variables that are showed up. Um, so what exactly had happened? So let's take a look really quick here, and you can see at the beginning of the file, back in that main, that there is a calculated relocation offset. And so it loads the relocation uh, information into the link register, uh, then branches into the function that actually re reloads, re relocates the code. Once it's relocated and does all its other stuff, it will return to this relocation return, which is at that relocation return address plus the offset. So kind of a little, uh, little work there to get everything out of the way to allow U-Boot to do things such as load other executables um, in those lower address ranges. So let's go ahead and say, um, I don't want to do that every time, right? That's kind of a, a pain. So instead of stopping it there and having to reload the, the symbol file, we can tell it uh, to go ahead and initially load the symbol file at that offset. So we'll just go ahead and put the offset here in the box not needing the 0x at the beginning because this is already assuming a hex number. All right. Let me resume this. Disconnect the debugger. All right, so we're back here. I'm going to go ahead and just reset the board so that it loads uh, back to a known state. There we go. Stop it from booting. Remember, that's very important. <laughs> um, this board is configured to load Linux, and if it loaded Linux, that would uh, get us out of the U-boot code, and we would not be able to debug this using the current setup. I do plan on having a little bit of uh, how do I debug Linux from uh, Eclipse later on in a different blog entry. So here we've gone ahead and started, and you can see here, now we have this error saying that the break address is at 4 bazillion, no debug information. This is because we loaded our simple file at uh, f bazillion. So let's go ahead and continue. It will uh, go ahead and start up uh, U-boot. Now we'll pause it. And now since we're in the relocated area, you can see this is where we have stopped it at, waiting for some serial port input at, that, at the console. So perfect. So why would I use one of these versus another one? Um, it really depends on where you want to uh, do your debugging at, if you want to do it prior or after relocation. So how do I get this relocation address, you ask yourself? Well, if you do a BD info at the command line or board info, that will bring up everything you need to know, including a relocation address. And this is where I got the relocation address to move the symbol file to. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Let us know what you think in the comments below and visit our website where there's this and other blog entries for your enjoyment. Thank you.